So my name is Jules Holland. Uh, I have a rhythm and blues orchestra, and I stand for boogie woogie music. And I stand for boogie woogie music on a number of platforms. I stand for boogie woogie music over here, and I stand for boogie woogie music over there. I've also stood for it here. So wherever you see me, I'll be standing for boogie woogie music. Yes, so I have a big band. There's five saxophones. We can hear one. Trombone section, trumpet section, uh, drums, which of course is Gilson Levis, who used to be in Squeeze with me. My brother on the organ, guitar player, Mark Fanagan, uh, uh, Louise Marshall, who's an amazing singer, as you'll hear. Beth Rowley, who's a great singer. Tonight we've also got um, uh, Pauline Black and Gaps Hendrickson from Selector to add a ska element, because we have a Jamaican ska element to our to our what we do, you know, there's a little bit of scar in there. Scar boogie. And uh, we also, of course, have the fire and the rain, England's own anointed boogie woogie queen, living, reigning boogie woogie queen, Ruby Turner. So, if you can work out how many people that is, you are better informed than I am. What is the connection between ska music, boogie woogie and rhythm and blues? Well, uh, we have a man called Michael Bammy Rose in our orchestra, who's from Jamaica, who's older. And before that, we used to have Rico Rodriguez, who was the great ska trombonist. And they said when they were little boys, they would hear a lot of Fats Domino. And a lot of the ska music, you know, the people were hearing the radio from New Orleans a bit. So it kind of that, and, and you hear records by Archibald in New Orleans and some of the Fats Domino ones, and they have that sort of scar, they almost have a scar feel. It's just, it's just sort of lifting up the, you hear Justin Adams playing that guitar with, on uh, those early records, and you, you, you realize it's the same thing that they're then doing in Jamaica, except they, they make it completely their own. So there is a sort of connection. And also, of course, as Rico used to say, he's no longer with us, God rest his soul, get somebody like Count Basie, all those riffs, endless blues riffs which the horn players in Jamaica would take and make, give them a different feel. Rise and shine! We are taking you to Scavel! When, I like it when things descend into the blues, when something's got a load of stuff and it just descends into the blues. I like that. But I wouldn't want to be too finickety about putting names, whether something's folk or jazz or blues or classical or ska or whatever it is. It's the important thing is the, the, the effect that it has. I know when I play the blues, I feel better. It's the first thing I learned on the piano was blues piano when I was about six years old. My, my uncle played, so I learned by I learned by ear. That's what I learned, and it always sort of feels better when I, you go back to that. So um, I suppose the blues for me is the first thing I learned and the thing that I go back to. But you listen to something like, you know, you listen to Jelly Roll Morton or Bessie Smith singing the blues. It's very different to if you hear. Beth Hart singing the blues, but actually it's the same thing. It's fantastic because it gets you here. And that's the important thing, it gets you here. And that's what all those artists do. Well, my mum and dad had Jelly Roll Morton records, but I couldn't really, f they were a bit complicated for me. I go back still and listen, they're still a bit complicated, to be honest. There's a lot in them because it's different every time you hear them. But, um, you see what it's like being in a big band. But, um, uh, my uncle played Boogie Woogie piano and he showed me a left hand and the left hand that he showed me was the same left hand because I've asked them that Dr. John was shown by his aunt, his auntie, 
Same left hand Ray Charles was shown by an old man in his village. Same left hand actually Ringo Starr was playing because he could play with it. It's like this boogie woogie left hand. And when I was about, actually I was about seven, when I heard my uncle playing this music, and he wasn't, I loved the way he played it and I love the way he plays still, but it was very naive what he did really. He just knew this one piece. Well, he just knew this one piece. He didn't know any other pieces because he was a bass player in a, in a and it, in, it was called the Planets. They were called London's Top Rhythm and Blues Group, but they weren't. They didn't. He was a lorry driver, really, but they said that about themselves, you know. Same time as the Rolling Stones, but they weren't like a big success like the Rolling Stones were, you know. But he played the piano, and when I heard him play that boogie woogie, for me, even at that age, it made me want to jump up in the air with joy and all of the chaos of the universe became ordered. And most importantly, I wanted to hear it again and again and again, and I wanted to be able to play it myself. And, I, and it was that love of it that drove me to want to learn, I think, and that's, what, and that's, how, you, that's how you learn, I guess, by, like, you have to love something. <laughs> 